Amen. Amen. Best town in Nigeria, Asaba. Hallelujah. Let us welcome him and his wife. His wife. God bless you. Pastor Mrs. Jumoke. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us give him a river of life. Welcome. Amen. Not just because he's a man of God, but because he's a pastor in Asaba. Hallelujah. Amen. Saints of God. Saints of God. We'll give him a Maryland and Asaba welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you have been to Asaba? Huh? Huh? He's not from Asaba, but he's in Asaba. Huh? Hallelujah. He's not from Asaba, but he's in Asaba. And he's in God's work in Asaba. Amen. Look, I'm not from America, but I'm an American citizen. Hallelujah. I'm in America. <laughs> God bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody jam your hands together for the Lord. I mean, for the Lord, you can do it better. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, God brought you here for blessing this morning. Let me hear a shout of an hallelujah. You know, and you know that your life can never remain the same after this encounter. Let me hear a shout of an hallelujah. Can we just lift up our hands to Jesus? Lift up your two hands to Jesus. Just to worship him. God is never tired of receiving our worship. And we can't ever be tired of just giving him praise. Lift up your hands and just worship him. Lift up your hands and worship him. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Wonderful, you are worthy. Oh. Somebody lift your voice, worship him. Matu prokotone. You are wonderful, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are wonderful. You are wonderful, Lord. You are mighty, Jesus. We thank you. Father, we thank you. We have not come unto the mount that burned with fire. We have come unto Zion, the city of the living God. We have come to the presence of the innumerable company of angels. We have come to the spirits of just men made perfect. We have come to the Father, the judge of all. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh the better things than the blood of Abel. And Father, tonight, this morning, we ask that your presence and your power, your glory, will cause a shift in this house. That somebody's life will take a new turn. Thank you, Mary Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And I hear somebody shout loud, Amen. Lord bless you can have your seat. I want to count it a great privilege and honor, a wonderful one for that matter, to be here to swim in the river of life of the RCCG. Come on, jam your hands together. You no, know, God, God is here, and I know it. God is here, and I know it. 
not like Jacob, not like Jacob who was not aware that God was there. But we know that God is here, and there's so much spiritual energy in this house. And this energy will make your life become better and better. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to especially appreciate God's servant, the father in the house, and a man with a large heart, not met, not seen, yet counted it worthy to give us a platform to be a blessing to God's people. In person of our pastor, Pastor Dr. David E.J. And Mama, please can we celebrate God's servant? Come on, go ahead and celebrate God's servant. Thank you so much, sir, for this privilege. A friend and a brother who introduced us has been to a place a couple of times to preach God's word. And when I was coming, he told me about this great work. And incidentally, laboring in that city, in that place for the past 14 years, and I just know that God has something doing in our lives. And I want to appreciate the entire leadership of this church for accepting me for a guest to be behind the pulpit this morning. I know your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. I knew I would be preaching here, so I've been preparing, praying, talking to God about it. And um, I have a word for somebody here today. I don't know who that word is for. But that word is going to turn your life around. That word will never leave you the same. The Lord asked me to let somebody know that there's going to be a shift in your life. There is going to be a shift. A shift from small to big. A shift from shame to fame. A shift from sickness to health. A shift from the ordinary to the extraordinary. And if that word looks like you, that word kind of reflect your situation, you are going to be shifted forward in the name of Jesus. And very quickly this morning, I want to speak on the message the Lord gave me, supernatural advancement. Supernatural advancement. Because at the end of this encounter, I prayed before I came, I know somebody is going to encounter God's power that is going to cause him to advance in life. That your amen is not correct at all. We are, we came from, and we are, most of you come from, we don't sell it, we give it out freely. Come on, let me hear a louder amen. amen. Thank you. First Samuel chapter 12. The devil is in trouble. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 6. First Samuel chapter 12, and in verse 6. Supernatural advancement. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Child of God, I would like you to know that the covenant movement of a Zionite is an upward movement and the forward movement. God did not design you and I, his children, to have a stagnated movement in life. As a matter of fact, when things are just on the same spot for a long time, it gives him concern. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, specifically in verse 3, after they have compassed that mountain for a long time. The Lord spoke and he told Moses, you have come past this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. My plan for you is not just to stay on the same spot. We have many people in lives, in businesses, in marriages, that year in, year out, they are just the same. And I tell people, God, you are not God. It's only God that remains the same. You cannot be the same. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you cannot be God. And since you are not God, you cannot just remain the same. Things must change. I come here to let somebody know, by the release of God's word, your life will change. If that amen is good enough, 
I would like you to know that something good will happen to you. I said your life will change in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible says that the Lord will move us from glory to glory. God's business for us, God's business, God's interest in our life is that we will experience change in all that pertains unto us. So the Lord spoke through Joshua to the people. I mean, through Samuel to the people. And said, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. It is the Lord that pushed him forward. What does it mean to be advanced? To advance means to put forward. To advance means to move forward to the front. To advance means to promote. To advance means to receive accelerated growth. After this encounter by the Spirit of the Almighty God, someone here is going to record an accelerated growth in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus. To advance means to move towards the front. By the time this meeting is over, by the release of God's word, I see somebody move from the back row to the front row. Where men did not give you opportunity to come and see what is happening in the front. I pray chances will open up for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And please, I would like you to know that God does not advance people into an empty place. God advances his people into a wealthy place. Psalms 66 and verse 12. The Bible says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. That is, we were somewhere hidden. We were somewhere in a corner. But God caused men. He, he temporarily allowed men to ride over us. They treated us anyhow. But when the time was up, when the time was due, he brought us out from that place of being oppressed by the enemy and he took us into a wealthy place. I stand as a prophet of the Most High to decree over your life. You will rule over your rulers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody shout of an amen? He said, though he has caused men to ride over our heads, but he took us and he brought us into a wealthy place. God does not take men to an empty space. God brings men into a wealthy place. Why? Because he's a God that believes in movement. Your life will no longer remain the same. Your marriage will no longer remain the same. Your business will no longer remain the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. And each time you hear the word advancement, it connotes the presence of an opposition. There is a barrier. There is a mountain. There is a confusion. But ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to know that you serve a God that fears no battle. You serve a God that fears no opposition. It doesn't matter how many or how strong the opposition is. When God says go forward, you will go forward. I want to decree over somebody's life. In spite of every opposition ahead of you, your life will go forward. Yeah. Let your amen be the loudest in the house. Yeah. I said your life will go forward yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, opposition does not answer to negotiation. Opposition answers to confrontation. I don't want to fight. Then you are the first attack of the enemy. Life itself is battle. Somebody hearing me now? Life itself is battle. I don't want to fight. In fact, you are just the cheapest prey in the hands of the enemy. Opposition does not answer to negotiation. Opposition answers to confrontation. Until you confront your enemy, you cannot conquer. Whatever you are not willing to confront, you cannot conquer. And that's why Every time there is a battle ahead of you, just get ready because there is a promotion coming for you. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Yeah. For 40 days, Goliath was just standing on that mountain, boasting to the people, if there is any man that can fight, let him come and take me up and fight. The fight we are going
going to get involved in it's not an ordinary fight it's a technical fight i don't need the whole city to fight whoever can confront me let him come forward if he defeats me the whole philistine became your slaves but if i defeat that person the whole israel becomes the slaves to the philistine and nobody was ready to destroy his father's name so that they won't say it was when your brother went out to fight that man and they defeated him that was when the whole city became a slave so everybody was hiding including saul and his men but a man came from the bush a young boy came from the bush nobody gave him chance when they enlisted men to fight he was not included they didn't remember him and that day he was simply sent on an errand go give food to your brethren and when he got to the place he what he had was a man defiling the armies of god of israel running down god and he said who is this uncircumcised philistine and eventually they told him he's goliath for 39 days now he's been doing this but every one of us was hiding and he said and he asked what will be the lot of the man that will win yeah. the first thing that got his attention was the fact that whoever wins the daughter of the king shall be for him and they be love women oh boy he did he did that was an attraction incentive you mean that come on now i could fight And then when they brought him up to Saul, this young man said they will fight. He said, who is this man? Who is his father? He had no name. His father had no name. But by the time he was through winning the battle, the whole nation knew his father. Let me announce to somebody here the battle confronting your family that nobody hear about the family. By the time you bring the head of that Goliath, they shall come to recognize your family. Can somebody shout a louder amen here? I don't care how long the battle has been on. The Bible says whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is a victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. I come to announce to somebody. By the time power comes to your hand, you will bring the head of your Goliath down. Can I hear a louder? Amen. Amen. And David went ahead. And he brought down the head of Goliath. They put on him an armor to wear. He wore it. It was too heavy for him. He said, I have not proved this. Let me use what I'm used to. Got his catapult. And five wood stones. That prophetically stands for the name of Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. He didn't need to use all. Did somebody hear what I just said now? He didn't need to use all, just one. That's why Proverbs 14 verse 19, the same Bible says, the evil will bow before good and a wicked man will bow at the palace of the righteous man. I don't know the problem that came here with you. You are not going with that problem. I said you are not going back home with that problem. In the mighty name of Jesus, we serve a living God. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. And it's the same forever. If you are standing before, he will do it again. That devil is a bastard. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Anointing is on your side. Your pastor is on your side. The word of God is on your side. You shall be victorious. I said you shall be victorious let me announce to somebody the life is about to turn around in your favor god is about to change the table to your side in the mighty name of jesus who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? thou shall be made plain i want to announce to somebody the mountain that is preventing you to see ahead that mountain is coming down i said that mountain is coming down he asked me to come and tell somebody that there is a shift coming your way. Somebody is about to leave a seat for you to occupy that seat. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. There's somebody holding your business deal in the hand. Somebody is holding the business paper in your hand. I mean in his hand. But that business is not his own. But he's holding the paper. After this meeting, that paper will drop in his hand. 
who art thou mountain before Zerubbabel? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, until the king Uzziah died, Isaiah didn't see the Lord. But when Uzziah died, the eyes of the prophet opened. You know what? Uzziah was a king. He was doubling as a king and as a prophet. You administer the justice. Let the prophet see. But Isaiah was seen and at the same time was ruling. You will either take one. Either you take your office and leave my office for me. But that you will do the both office, it will not happen. And I heard God's servant talking about warfare. Can I let somebody know? Until you fight a good warfare, you do not enjoy a good welfare. Good welfare answers to good warfare. Is somebody hearing me now? So when we are talking about advancement, we are talking about an opposition. When we are talking about advancement, we are talking about a barrier that is ahead. But it does not matter how terrible that barrier is. There is a God that can move mountain. There is a God that can level the mountain. There is a God that can fill up the valley. There is a God that can make the crooked path to be straight. Ladies and gentlemen, we serve a God huh, that leaves the house but is never away from the house. We serve a God that enters a place but where he left, he was still fully loaded. God that does not need the key to open the door. God that we serve huh, is a God. Huh, the Bible calls him the Almighty, the full breasted God. Huh. We serve Jehovah. Jehovah El Gibor, his name is Jehovah Adonai, it's Jehovah Shalom, it's Jehovah Sabbath, it's Jehovah Sikeno. The Bible says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that God, the everlasting God, is not weary and there is no turning back? That God is fighting your battle. Everyone who said that he will not become uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to announce to three people in their presence I shall become it. Come and say to three people in their presence I shall become it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Can I let somebody know you shall become that wife, uh, you shall become that mother, you shall become that businessman, you shall become that director, you shall become that graduate. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Rise up on your feet and shout hallelujah. But see that. And Samuel said, see that. It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. I am quite aware that Pharaoh was the king that would never allow the credit to come to my people. But in spite of the fact that Pharaoh was reigning, I will still advance the cause of Moses. I still advance the cause of Aaron. Despite the opposition, they still succeeded in their ministry. Hear me. The challenge is not withstanding. You will record success. That's not song. It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. And that same God has not changed. That's what I'm trying to let somebody know this morning. Let me quickly show you one or two things. John chapter 3 and verse 8. John chapter 3 and verse 8. God is not interested in us being stagnant in life, in business, and in destiny. The Bible says in verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Can I hear you? I mean, can I let somebody know this? Whenever motion it's an issue. Power is always a force to reckon with. Every time that motion is an issue, either business motion, marital motion, life motion, I'm talking about movement. Whenever movement is an issue, a force is something that you must reckon with. Until you come in contact with a power, 
you remain on the same spot. Newton law tells us, I think the law of Newton, that every object remains on the same state of rest until a power acts on it. Ladies and gentlemen, until you contact power, you remain stagnant. I'm not talking about power that comes from drinking beer. Is somebody hearing me now? Until you contact power, you remain stagnant. That Deuteronomy 8, 18, we normally quote, I am the Lord that God that gives thee the power to make wealth. I am the Lord thy God that is without power, wealth is just going to be struggle. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Except the Lord buildeth the house, the laborer laboreth but in vain. It is vain for a man to rise up early and to sit up late in the night and to eat the bread of sorrow. But God giveth his beloved sleep. Mind you, that sleep is not talking about siesta. That sleep is not talking about night rest. That sleep is talking about giving you an idea. Like David said, my God instruct my reins in the night. You can run from morning till night and have nothing to show. But when the power is introduced into your running, you will run in vain. And there are so many running in vain. Running like their life in vain. Year in, year out. Just making money for others to spend. Making money for the government to spend. When shall you make your own money? It takes power to make wealth. It does not take struggle to make wealth. Somebody is contacting the power this morning. That your amen doesn't look as if you believe it. It is vain for a man to wake up early, do three shifts. Is somebody hearing me now? You don't see your children for three days. The husband is not there. And at the end of the day, the paycheck does not increase. But ladies and gentlemen, there's a God that can turn the table. I have, I have come to introduce to someone this morning. Is somebody hearing me? Somebody's effort for years had not been recognized in this family. But God is changing the game. They will know you are working. I didn't hear your amen. I said they will know you are working. In the name of Jesus. And when wind blows... Something about wind is that wind has got speed and wind has got direction. Wind blows where it chooses to blow. If there is no way for the wind to pass, the wind will dance around the obstacle. If the, something is blocking the way of the wind and the wind can carry it, the wind will blow it off. After this morning, you shall become unstoppable. Yeah. That your amen is not good enough. Yeah. You shall become unstoppable. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, your business will become unstoppable. Yeah. They've been trying to stop your business. I have come to release power for you. Your business become unstoppable. Yeah. Your marriage become unstoppable. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Well, here it is. We're talking about motion. We're talking about movement. We're talking about shift. He asked me to release the word of shift in the house. That somebody must move from where he is to the next level. Advancement is talking about movement to the next level. But here it is in life. Nobody is ahead of you by mistake. Did you hear what I just said? 
No one is ahead by mistake. Some forces decide him or her to be ahead of you. He might not be the best. She might not be the most beautiful. But a force was at work that made him or her to be ahead. So, if you are with such a person, just flow. Just do what? Don't quarrel with people that are ahead of you. It's turn by turn. It will soon get to your turn. Somebody hearing me now? Praise God. Now, every attempt for you to pull down those that are ahead of you, you are simply digging your grave that God don't let me get there. When I see something good that is just ahead of what I'm doing, I celebrate that. Because my time will come. Maybe the person got there before me. And if he got there before me, he will have it before me. And you know the second side of that? It is too early to conclude who is ahead. It is what? To conclude who is ahead. Because that guy that is in front today, and it's like he's the one running, game will change. Game might change. And the one that is ahead, have you watched the relay race before? Or 15,000, I mean 1,500 meter dash. They blew the whistle. One guy just broke out with the whole of his strength running. He thought he was going to run a 100 meter dash. Not knowing that the journey is too far. But there was one guy that was taking his time. Was gathering strength and momentum. Taking his time and running. The first 100 meter, the first 200 meter. By the time the guy who ran ahead with the whole of his strength is through exhausting his energy. The one that was behind now picked his strength. And the guy that they thought was the last eventually ran ahead. What are we saying? It is too early to conclude who is in the front. I may be behind today, but a strength is coming for me that will catapult me to the front. Ladies and gentlemen, God is about to bring you to the level of your masters. Did you believe that can happen? Did you believe that can happen? Abba, Joseph was the eleventh child of his father. The Bible said when Jacob was about to die in the land of Egypt, he told Joseph, bring unto me the songs you have, Ephraim and Manasseh. And when they brought Ephraim and Manasseh to Joseph, I mean to Jacob, Jacob told Joseph, these ones are for me. Just as Reuben and Levi are, this one, I adopt them to be in the same class. Before, they were nephews to Reuben. But now by the blessing that I'm putting on them, I'm putting them in the class of their uncles. They are no longer nephews. Though they may be low in age, it doesn't matter. What the blessing does is to change your status. What the blessing does is to change your speed. What the blessing does is to change your direction. I want to prophesy over some people here. I release the blessing of God to change your smell, to change your status, to change your speed. In the name of Jesus. And he told Joseph, as if as Reuben and his uncles are, so are Ephraim and Manasseh. Every other child you have after them can be normal. But Ephraim and Manasseh, I'm not going to give them just ordinary blessing. And eventually when Reuben missed it, and Reuben broke out of the covenant by going to his father's bed to defile it, his blessing was transferred, shared for Ephraim and Manasseh. They had portion, direct portion in their grandfather. Though they were not meant for that. Blessing can change your status. Somebody is coming in contact with that power this morning. Your status will change. Let your amen be the loudest. Let your own amen be the loudest. Let your own amen be the loudest. Your status will change in the name of Jesus.
Esther chapter 10 and verse 2. I mean, Esther chapter 3, verse 1, and chapter 10, verse 2. I show you two people. The Bible says in chapter 3 of Esther, verse 1, the, and after these things did King Ahuzeros promote Haman, the son of Hamedata, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. It's not as if this man was a good man. No. It's not as if Haman was a good, good man. But somebody promoted him and made him to be above every other prince. That's why I said, nobody's ahead by mistake. I just pray you will connect people that can put you ahead. Hear this strong word. Man is God's answer to man. I say it again. Man is God's answer to man. He wants your situation to change. He sends you his word. He wants your position to change. He sends you a man. Can I pray for some people here? The man that will change your position, let that man locate you. Some of you didn't understand this prayer. It's not ordinary prayer. It's not ordinary prayer. I don't know how it works here. But it's a general universal principle. Man is an answer of God to man. Apostle Paul has so much on his inside when he was converted, when he became Paul from Saul. And there was a day the elders in Jerusalem were having a meeting. Paul endeavored to come in. And they looked at him. This dog, this guy that so much persecuted the church, they didn't give him chance. But thank God for Barnabas. They turned him back. They didn't allow him to enter. But as he was going out, Barnabas was coming in. And Barnabas said, what happened, brother Saul? They said, I may talk. But I've repented. They wouldn't believe me. They thought he came to spy. And Barnabas took him by the hand and brought him into the company of the elders and told them that this man has changed. And Paul began to go in and out with the elders. And after all, by the time he was through, he said, though he was the least of all the apostles, but he labored more than them all. Not by my own power, but by the grace that was made available. I want to pray for somebody. The grace of God will distinguish you. The grace of God will separate you. The grace of God will change your story. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. So it was King Ahuzeros that promoted Haman to become the king. But the game changed. Ahuzeros promoted Haman. And you know the story very well how he victimized the Jews. And not long after then, he began to fight his arch enemy then. Mordecai. Though Mordecai was on the floor. But when power changed hand, the great man became the great man. The great man became the great man. And in chapter 10 of Esther and in Vasu, after all the wars and the battles had been fought, the Bible said, and all the act of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, his greatness was recorded. In your lifetime, he lift up your right hand. Let me prophesy. In your lifetime, your own greatness too shall be recorded. Don't take this prayer lightly. Lift up your right hand. I stand and I prophesy. In your lifetime, your own greatness too shall be recorded. Now see them. He said, and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him. It was the king that advanced the first guy, what's his name? Haman. The same king advanced 
Say, oh Lord. Come on now, pray with me. Say, oh Lord. Advance me in life. Can you say it again? Say, oh Lord. Advance me in life. Say it from the depth of your heart. Say, oh Lord. Advance me in life. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. So the king advanced him. I did not read in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia. So it's too early to conclude with a head. Praise God. Is somebody hearing me? I might have come to church borrowing the transport fear this morning. I know most of you guys came with your car, but it doesn't happen like that with us back home, you know. So, I might have come to church this morning with the transport fear, but don't write me off. There is still a God on my side. I might still run a transport company. I might have been out of the house this morning as a squatter, but don't count me out. Before the end of the day, I can see build my estate because the Bible says it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. The Bible says this battle is not to the strong, nor the bread to the eater, nor men of understanding, but the Lord made time and chance available for Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 the race is not to the swift nor battle to the strong nor bread to the eater the men of understanding don't always get rich but time and chance happened to them all not to some people, to them all. Those that are making it, they don't have two heads. Uh, they have only one head. Uh, those that are there at the top, they are not just jumping from heaven. They were born as I was born. Uh, time and chance happened to them all. Uh, though it was their time, uh, it shall soon become my own time. Uh, everybody that is ahead, I clap for them. Uh, everyone that's ahead, I celebrate them. Uh, but they cannot shine my shine. I will shine my shine. They will shine their own shine. When my time comes, I will shine. Tell your neighbor, I will shine my own shine. I don't know if you understand that grammar. That is, I will yet celebrate. Uh, though I came for your celebration party, it is just your time. Uh, wait for me. My invitation card is ahead. Uh, you will soon come for my own celebration party. It's not only you that can have it. I too can have it. Time and chance happen to them all. I am one of them. Uh, I want to prophesy to some people here. Your time will come. You don't seem to get that prayer point. I said your time will come. Your chance will happen. Your time will come. Your chance will happen. I kneel down before Jehovah on this altar. I pray over your life. Your time will come. Your chance will happen. 2015, your time will come. Your chance will happen. This month, your time will come. Your chance will happen. You will march forward. You will march forward. You will march forward. In the name of Jesus. Someone say, I receive it. Now let me just round up this morning. So the path of the just is like a light. It shines brighter and brighter. More and more. It's not less and less. Somebody hearing me now. More and more. For God and a child of his, there is no better yesterday. If last year seemed to be better, something is wrong. Somebody hearing me now. Don't believe the report from the CNN. Whose report will I believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. And in 1 Samuel chapter 12, as I ran up this morning, I mean, 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16, I read from verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 16, if I can get it on the screen, I will appreciate it. From verse 11. Now, this is the story of a man 
that was pushed forward in life. Amen. That something happened to his destiny. That is going to happen to somebody here this morning. I read from verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he kept the sheep. They gave him the wrong job. But because it was not his time, he was doing it. Some guys are here doing wrong jobs. But God is about to change your job. I don't know who I just spoke to. Wrong jobs. And he kept the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not. I'm continuing. Please keep on the stuff for me on the screen. We will not sit down till he come here. Verse 12. Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and without of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. Verse 13. The man of the woman is come. But in the time they skipped him. The man of the woman is around, but they didn't recognize. The man that is going to change the game, they did not invite him. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon. Somebody say, come upon. Okay, let's say it in King James language. Came upon. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now, watch me. You know, Samuel was sent on an errand. Go anoint me king. Saul is messed up already. Get me king. And the king is in the house of Jesse. Samuel said, Lord, if Saul hears, I'm going to get another king, he will kill me. Say, okay, don't proclaim that you are going to do anointing service. Just tell them you want to go and hold a feast. Tell Jesse to prepare and let his children, his sons be available. Here it is. Eventually, when they got to the place, David, the youngest, that was supposed to be in the house to be watching the television. David, the youngest, that was supposed to be the one that every other person would be petting was in the bush, keeping the sheep. And when Samuel got to that house, he saw Eliab that looked like the next king. He wanted to anoint him. Because prophet, hold it. I don't see the way men see. Man look at the outward. But God look at in the inside. Hear me? As I begin to round off, your heart will qualify you for the shift. Can I say this? It is not everyone that is anointable. Some of us can carry oil on our head, but the grace is not resting on our life because our heart is not right for it. I pray your heart will be right for the oil. And he said, there is none of this one that I chose. I have rejected him. I need to run. And eventually, is this all your children? He said, no. There is one young boy. He's in the bush. I want to believe David's mom was not in Jesse's house. Maybe he must have had him outside wedlock. Yeah? No wonder David said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. But it doesn't matter how you were born. God made you. It doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter how I came. I am not an accidental discharge. I am a child of destiny. 
it does not matter the conditions surrounding my birth. Uh, the Bible says my purpose is stronger than my conception. He told Jeremiah, before your mother knew you, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I have ordained you. Though you are a local man, I have ordained you a prophet unto the nations of the earth. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your purpose in life is stronger than your conception. Your purpose in life is stronger than your problem. When you look away from your problem, hold on to your purpose. Your problem will succumb. And eventually, David came. And when David came, God said, this is he. Anoint him. We will not sit down. Until it comes. Everyone was waiting. Everyone was standing. Until the right man gets to the sinner. I want to sell, tell someone today. What is going to happen to you today. Will cause men to wait for you to arrive. Will cause men to wait for you to come. That they want to do a meeting. They will not start the meeting until you show up. Because the man that has the word uh, has not come. Uh, the man that has the oracle in his mouth uh, has not come. The man uh, that has the finance uh, to sustain what we are going to do has not. How dare we hold a meeting when the principal man is not around? We will all wait uh, until he comes. Uh, that is what anointing can make out of a man. Hear me? And on my anointed destiny is a silent destiny. An unanointed destiny is a silent destiny. Something must happen to you for good. And the Bible said, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Now listen to me. The word come upon means shalak. And that word shalak means to be pushed forward. Watch me. That's what shalak means. To be brought to the front. That's what shalak means. To break out. That was the same word that God used in the book of Judges chapter 15. When they bind Samson. When the Philistines threatened the Israelites that they were going to finish them. Because Samson had destroyed their farmland. And they told the Israelites, we go, you are going to pay for it. But only what we need you do for us, send, get us Samson. If you can get us Samson, we'll leave you. And they promised them. But before that time, they told Samson, this is what they said. Samson said, no problem. Is it me they want to deal with? No problem. I will release myself. He released himself. And they bind him with court. And the Bible says in Judges chapter 16, when the Philistines came and they shouted and they roared, as they roared, their shout provoked the strength that was on the inside of Samson. And the cord that was with him, that they tied it with, broke. And he lay hold on the jawbone of an ass. And with the jawbone of an ass, he slew a thousand men. And he went ahead. The Philistines ran away. The word means come upon. To come upon means to push, to prosper, to push, to go forward. Hear me. Men, when they push you forward, other men can stop you. But when God pushes a man forward, no force can stop him. No more. God is about to push somebody forward this morning. I don't know if somebody is hearing me now. If it is just a man that is pushing a vehicle, an obstacle in front of that vehicle can stop it. But if it is a truck, I don't know what to call it here, a trailer with full force is the one pushing a vehicle. The obstacle and everything trying to stop it, as long as the truck is moving, everything is moving. Why? Because a force that is bigger than the obstacle is ahead. Lift up your right hand. This month, in this 2015, God will push you forward. Ah, some of you, you know, it's not every push you can resist. Oh. Is somebody hearing me now? 
Your little two-year-old boy can be pushing you. Daddy, you are not even responding. Daddy, you are not responding. But let me with my heart come and push you. Even if you don't want to respond by force, something will be acting on you. My brother comes on. Sorry? Now, please, can we just move to that place? That the middle place. Let me call for him. You can come back, sir. Amen. Now you stay. You see, the guy moved in his own spirit. He even do his jacket wear. Because he was moving on his own. Now you are going to that same place. This time around, look front. Are you afraid? I can't do anything. Now listen to me. Does he have time to adjust his jacket? Was he moving on his own speed? He was even almost trying to jump. When the force is pushing you, Somebody's marriage is about to be pushed by God. Somebody's finance is about to be pushed by God. Somebody's destiny is about to be pushed by God. If you are the one say, God, push me. Can you, can you rise up on your feet and say, God, push me. Say, God, push me forward. God cannot push you and you will remain the same. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Mama. God cannot push you and you'll be in the same position. If you have not been pushed by God before, the time has come huh, for you to be pushed. Somebody say, God, push me forward. Say, God, push me. Say, God, push me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now rise where you are. Lift up your right hand. Because... Somebody is here. Please, can I have men on the keyboard? Can the choir just come? Because somebody's somebody's about to be pushed. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Halabolo shakaba. Hey. Are you ready? Somebody is about to be pushed. I say financial push here this morning. I say marital push here this morning. Somebody is about to be pushed. If you can pray in the spirit, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Something is about. An operation is about to happen here. An oppression is about to happen here. An oppression. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two. Ah! My God. You are awesome in this place, my regard. Lift up your two hands. Somebody is ready, ready, ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for God's push. Sing it, sing it. Drama, gather, gather, gather. You are worthy, you are worthy. Let's lift up our hands to worship. You are awesome, Lord. You are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. Everybody come. Lift up our hands and worship him this morning. My God. My God. Abba Father. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, yes. You are awesome. Lift up your two and sing it. You are awesome, Lord.
Now hear this word. Please don't miss me here. Don't miss me here. He told me there is a shifting for someone. And what God says to one, he says to all. And there's a shifting in the house. But I needed to use a world that has a root in the Bible. That's why I titled it Supernatural Advancement. But it's all about shifting. Now hear this. Every man God pushes. He gets something from them to push them forward. The word shalak means to break out. To break out. Now listen to me. They were looking for a prophet because there was confusion. And three nations, they didn't have a direction. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 13. And they said, is there not any man we can get a word from? And one of the kings said, there is an Elijah, a man that poured water on the hand of Elijah. And they looked for Elijah. And the Bible said, Elijah prophesied, there may not be rain, there may not be dew, but the ditch shall be filled with water. Hear this. What he used to serve was what God make him to provide. What he used to serve his master, that was what God used him to provide when men need. Are you listening to me? That widow that had nothing and men had came to carry his homes so that they could sell them because her husband was owing the wife of the prophet. Is there anything in your house? Say nothing. Save a pot of oil. What messed him up was money. But what God embarrassed her with at the end of the day was money. Ladies and gentlemen, something is embarrassing you now. But with that same thing, something is harassing you now. But with that same thing, God is about to turn your life around. It was the water Elisha was pouring on the hand of Elijah. When they needed water, it was the man that knew the secret of pouring water. That was the same man that brought water. Hear me? I feel God here. I, I, sense, I sense the spirit of the Lord here. There is a limit that has been on your business. In fact, this limit I, I saw now, not just on you, it's been on the family. There's a seal. But God is saying this morning, I'm, I'm removing that seal. I'm shifting that seal. Now hear this. God's servant just said it. Whenever you want to tell the vision, you will go to the television. That's a word from the Lord. Somebody has been in the hiding, but God wants to break you out of that hiding. And listen to me, and put you right in the center spot where men will see. Three prayers I ask you to do this morning. Two prayer, one action. How many prayers? One action. Hear me? Most time, God does not give you what you pray for. He gives you what you are prepared for. I don't know if somebody just came now. You, you, can be, you can be praying that God make me great and you are not prepared for greatness. You don't become it. 
you become your preparation you cannot be asking that the Lord should make you to be a wealth distributor and you're stingy you're not prepared for it and that's why I said God sees your heart if your heart qualifies you then you can have it many people their hearts do not qualify them for the blessing they're asking for God doesn't give you most times what you pray for but what you are prepared for two prayer points one action number one prayer Lord take me beyond me move me forward now hear this prayer very well that was the prayer Jabez said said Lord that thou wouldest bless me indeed first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 10 that thou wouldest enlarge my coast that the hand of the enemy will not hurt me what he said Lord bless me beyond me Lord push me beyond me push me forward if you remain the same something is not pushing you but when God pushes you no man can stop you say to me Heavenly Father I want us to pray together say Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus this morning by the forces of heaven I receive a shift beyond myself oh Lord push me forward in the name of Jesus say that prayer very well say that prayer say that prayer now I hope you can pray there I hope you can pray here this morning I hope somebody can pray I hope somebody can pray I sense the power of God here this morning I sense the grace of God here this morning hey somebody pray somebody pray Lord push me forward Lord take me forward thank you father in the name of jesus we have prayed i didn't hear your amen. amen the second one every opposition that is ahead of me in life and in destiny what are you waiting for clear off from my path are you ready to pray say my father let's pray together say my father every power ahead of me opposing my progress opposing my progress oh lord clear them out i clear you out open your mouth and clear out opposition some of you are not praying some of you are not praying every opposition in marriage opposition in destiny opposition in career let them be pushed out of your way financial position be removed in the name of jesus Lift up your voice and pray. 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 Every barrier ahead of me, opposing my progress, I remove you. In the name of Jesus, every opposition ahead of me in life and destiny, I take you out. I take you out. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And I hear a lot of amen. amen. I want to pray for you. He asked me to join hand with you. You sense stagnation around you. And it's been there for two, three years now. You've not really broken out. You've been on that same spot. Can you step out very quickly? I want to pray with you. Now take a song. Sing, 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 sing a song for me. A worship song. Just line up very, very, 
line up in the front. You, you've seen a stagnation. Just, you are just stand still. In the past two, three years or more than that, it, it's been on just that same standing point. Can, can you just, maybe maritally, maybe, maybe, maybe financially, I don't know. Can you just turn your hands together? Turn your hands together. Labo Shakalaba. You can come, you can take another row at their back. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in agreement, we ask that you will do something unusual in this house this morning. You will do something unusual in this house this morning. I begin to prophesy that you are breaking out now. You are breaking out. You are breaking out. You are breaking out. The power of God is here now. 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 My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Go, go, go. 
My God. Lose him and let him go. I break the power holding him. Break the power. Lose him and let him go. Go, 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 go. 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 Lose her. Let her go. 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 Holding you back. I release you now. I release you. Go. Go. Lusa, let her go. You never let her go. Lusa, let her go. Lusa, let her go. Let her go. Lusa, let her go. Let her go. Yeah. Let her go. Him. Let him go. Let him go. 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 Lose him and let him go. 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 Lusa, let her go. Lusa, let her go. Let her go. Lucy, let him go. Let him go. Lucy, let him go. Let him go. Lose him, let him go. Lose him, let him go. Let him go. Go, go, go. You are my strength, Lord, when I'm weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my God in God. Oh, Jesus. Seeking you. Oh, Lord, to give I'll be a hear me? I had it now. What you serve with is what you will make happen. Please, just honor the Lord. Can we be on our feet? Can we all rise on our feet? Honor the Lord, please. Don't mind this small boy. But hear me what I heard. You will write check for me, men will write check for you. 
not me, God saying. God is saying, you will write me a check and men will write you a check. As we are going to this TV ministry, we're still raising resources. I want as many that would dear God, I'm not saying the devil now, dear God, say, God, I will write you a check of a thousand dollar. I will write you a check of five hundred dollars. I will write you a check right now of two hundred fifty dollars to be part of putting this house in the center spot of his vision. I want to pray with you this morning. If you're in that category, can you just step forward very quickly? I want to write God a check of a thousand dollars. And I will appreciate if you can just come with that check and make it available. Of a five hundred dollars of at two hundred and fifty dollars. That level first. If you are coming, please can you come very quickly? I, I, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to join my faith with yours. Please, can you come very quickly? I, 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 I sense something. I sense an unusual grace around me this morning. He told me there is a shift. He told me there is a shift. And what you make happen for God is what God will make happen for you. And if you are talking about financial harassment, you don't bother. The time to embarrass that finances has come. Check of $1,000. A check of $500. You know how you do it here. You want to write a check of $250. Dealing with those people. Now, please let the ushers stand behind them as I take it from them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My brother, don't, don't rest. You, you, you put me on. Choir, please. We are doing this together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's moving. Something's changing. See his glory. Like the heaven on earth. You got it? Now write the check for me. Write the check for the Lord. In favor of the river of life. River of life. You know how you do it. Or you just do something convenient for you. Do something convenient for you. Now please, if you have it, I want you to wave it to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm saying bye-bye to that opposition. Oh God. Hey, come on now, come on, come on, come on. Hey, something's moving, something's changing. See his glory, it's like heaven or not. Something's moving, something's changing. Ah, see his glory. It's like heaven on earth. Where did the check? Where the check? Where the check? Where the check? Where the check? Something's glory. It's the heaven on earth. Oh, 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 oh. Heaven, heaven on earth. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The message the man of God has preached. As I was sitting down there, the message is on advancement. Did you know the time moved forward? It's not by accident to march forward. The time moved forward. And today is the eighth day, right? Huh? New beginning. So it is not by accident. Your time has moved. You've advanced. I want everybody to stand to their feet. Don't, if you say you don't have, you will not have. If you say you don't have, you don't have. Everybody must join this line. It's not by accident. If you don't want to move forward in life, you may want to sit down. But we are moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us, let us obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. One seed can turn your life around. Time and chance. This is your time and this is your chance. Your time and chance to shine. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. amen. Comply and God will bless you in Jesus' name. My life's changing. Lift up those wave, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. We are 